Phantasm 1, absolute classic. Phantasm 5, not so much. <laughs> Phantasm has been one of my absolute favorite franchises. So five years ago when I started doing these reviews, I had zero clue what I was really trying to do with this. I had deflated the classics, and the first Phantasm film was one of them. Every year after, I've knocked down one of these films. Five years deep, we've hit the end of the road for the franchise. The last and honestly worst film of the franchise, Phantasm V Ravager, dropped only seven years ago. And as a send-off to our cast, Angus Grimm would sadly pass away before the film would debut. Mike and Reggie would also play a set-off to their characters, but this wouldn't be the first jab at the film. Initially, Don Coscarelli, creator of the series, had begun talks of Ravager in 2004 in a Fangoria interview. The fifth installment reportedly would split off into a trilogy and a new line remake, but rumors would go cold after another three years. Until, test footage would hit the internet in a small video in a farewell to the Alamo Draft House. The film would be shot secretly in late 2012, early 2013. Phantasm.com would get a teaser in 2014, but some setbacks would lead this film to officially release in October of 2016. A mix of low budget and little to no traction, the behind the scenes problems showed through the film. Not only does the trio of characters kind of carry the movie, but it's almost not enough. They still don't disappoint and remain entertaining while on screen. Ravager follows a senile Reggie Bannister who's in the hospital with dementia and partially bound to a wheelchair. The flick theater ties in the idea of Reggie's a crazy old man or if the events playing out are even real. We go round and round through the timeline, back and forth, and often back to the hospital. We get a break from the dream where Mike comes to get Reggie from the hospital. He tells him he's been on ice out this whole time. And as if this isn't confusing enough, the tall man is taken over. But wait, that was a dream because it all falls apart. Mike visits a confused Reggie at the hospital. Mike also has been having dreams and still has a connection to the tall man and a sort of call back to Phantasm IV Oblivion. The whole movie falls back apart at this point and we blur the lines of the story. Jody returns in this beautiful barracuda and they head north because tall man hates the cold, I guess. But I'm honestly not sure if that's meant to be the end or if the real end is where Jody and Mike stay with Reggie who passes away in the hospital. No clue. Sadly, Scrim isn't on screen nearly as much here as he was in the past four movies, and it shows. The script lumps itself for Reggie's back, and it's not left with a whole lot to work with, or arguably he's working with too much. Oh, and if you haven't tapped out yet, they added a mid credit scene like it's part of the MCU, where we add two more of the past cast members into the Barracuda, so I guess he dies in his dream. If you don't ask too much from this one and expect a mild send off to your favorite characters, you'll probably still be disappointed, but it's not the worst movie out there. If you're a hardcore fan of the first film like I am, then you have to watch this one whether you want to or not. If you ask me, it seems like the true end is Reggie passing away and leaving Mike and Jody behind, and the whole franchise was a strange fever dream and a dying Reggie had. Or hell, maybe Jody really dies in the first one and the rest was all a dream. And I hate that idea. The whole idea of, you know, dream endings, I I've always not liked, but whatever. It seems to make more sense than them just driving off like their guts at the end of every Berserk issue. And oh yeah, there's also a giant setting on the sky. Yeah. Coscarelli talks about a possibility of Phantasm 6, but it seems as if there really is no true plans for that. So as it stands, this is the end of the road for one of my all-time favorite franchises. I plan to in the future maybe doing a video break it down like an anatomy of the franchise kind of thing where I talk about all the movies, especially considering my at least my first two reviews in the franchise don't probably hold up. And those are the two most important movies. I just love talking about these ones. And in some sick way, I enjoy talking about this one too. But if there's ever is a six phantasm, I'll be sure to drop one of these just for old time six. Do I know you? Name's Jebediah. Been here such a long time. Oh, I've lost so many friends. And I'm afraid this body of mine is almost finished. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you're not already, drop a little subscription down below. Make sure you stay tuned because every day in the month of October, I'm dropping a different horror movie review. Uh, I believe they come at 7 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. And uh, so keep an eye out for that. And then every week, every other week uh, throughout October, there's a bonus comic video still coming up. I still want to make sure there's still some combo content on the channel. And then throughout the rest of the year, there's combo content every single week, one to two times a week. Plus, I do the YouTube shorts where I post stuff on there every day. I got the Instagram. I got the Facebook. I got the, the Facebook group fans unleashed where you get a behind-the-scenes look at the, the 
you know, whole channel, everything, Connors Comics, the whole company, all that kind of stuff. So all, all that is linked down in the description below. And again, make sure you subscribe. Keep an eye out for updating daily videos. And uh, until next time, peace.